Hello and welcome back to Commercial Radio. Today we'll be continuing with Lecture 7 and we'll start looking at promotions. Today we're starting with commercial content. So this will be part one of four. And this is in chapter six in creating content three in your textbook. Okay. So what we're looking at today specifically is page 214 to page 218. Okay. So before we start looking at this, let's start by looking at what makes engaging radio. Think about it for yourself. What for you will make a piece of content that's really engaging? So think about yourself and those engaging types of content. How much emotions are they involved in that? Is it emotive pieces? So what we found is that emotivity is the main driver of listener engagement. Okay, If I can get you to feel something, that's the main cause of you listening to me and you continuing to listen to me Okay, because I've hooked you. Um, we, are, we now have this connection via emotions. Think about your friends. Um, why are you friends with certain people? At some point, you must have connected on an emotional level. When a piece of audio gets a listener to feel emotional about something, they are essentially engaged in that audio piece. And they are of value to the content creator because we hold a listener's attention when we are emotionally connected to a piece of content. And this is, at the end of the day, for any content creator, the ultimate goal. It's not an easy task as different listeners react emotionally to different types of content. But there are certain areas that content creators and brands can focus on in order to establish an emotional connection with the audience. So there's one study that was conducted by the Emotional Intelligence Agency, and they are an internet and a data strategy company. Brian Miller, who is the co-founder of the agency, says the following about this. We asked over 5,000 people around the world to tell us about the brands whose content they actively sought out, then analyzed what those brands did. The result was surprisingly consistent. Popular brands had multifaceted personalities. They could make you laugh or cheer or lean forward and take notes. They'd stopped hammering away at shared minds and were expanding to achieve a share of emotion. Okay, so they found that it was about the emotions. In order for a radio station to obtain the share of emotion, the EIA study determined that, the, that there are um, four kinds of emotionally compelling content that we should be focusing on. And these four are funny, useful, beautiful and inspiring and that's this model that you can see in front of you this is called the fuby model as you can see there are four types of content which have been broken up into smaller subcategories there under funny we also get parody slapstick satire potty and black under useful there's consumer reviews social good news analysis news updates wonder under inspiring, you have ideas, spiritual, weird, biographical, and heartwarming. And under beautiful, you have sensual, pop, extravagant, minimalist, and cute. So from this, from Fuby, we now move on to Fubby. Okay. What is the difference? What is the difference between Fuby and Fubby? From an audio creation or a radio perspective, Fuby can be translated into Fubby, okay? So note that extra B. Note that extra B. That's the difference between the two. That B stands for bold, meaning the content presented uh, must challenge what has been traditionally aired on radio uh, by being courageous and daring. This means developing new ideas, okay? Or taking a fresh approach to old ideas such as hosting a very different type of interview. So doing something out of the ordinary, something that challenges the norms. So being bold in essence, right? What it comes down to is every single piece of content that you put out on air should be created using Fubby, okay? Using this model, because there should be an emotion involved, whether it's a link, whether it's a feature, whatever it is, you need to utilize Fubby. Why? Because if your content satisfies 
the FABI standards, it's more likely to emotionally connect with your listeners. We're going to start looking at promotions specifically now, and promotions also need to be put through the FABI filter in order for them to in order for them to get the reactions that we are looking for. Okay, so this means that content must be measured against the requirements um, set out in FABI. Looking at radio promotions, on-air promotions and contests are used with the aim to draw in new listeners and get current listeners to tune in more often. But how does this work if the vast majority of listeners are tuning in for the entertainment elements? So let's say the music or the information like the news or the personalities. So they're tuning in for a specific presenter. Radio promotions at the end of the day work to achieve some, if not all, of the following four objectives. Firstly, to entertain the passive listener and to get them to listen for longer and talk about the content. What is a passive listener again? The passive listener is the one who will sit and listen to the content without actively getting involved. So they won't phone the station and um, play a game on air, okay, or ask or answer a question live on air. They'll sit in their car and listen to the content and engage in that way. So they are the passive listeners. Secondly, to engage research participants and get them to play along and therefore listen for longer and to, um, get them talking about the content. So these research participants that we speak about, that is our active listener. Why? Because if I'm willing to phone a radio station to take part in their competition live on air, I'm a good candidate to also partake in research for the radio station. Number three there, to create platforms for platforms of engagement for brands and advertisers. Obviously, there's just another platform for them to be able to advertise and for us to make more money. And lastly, to gather detailed data on listeners to benefit both the station and its advertisers. So that data that we are now creating, so that data that we're now getting in, we can use in order to see who our average listener is on a specific show or who tunes in at a specific time. And that we can also then take to the advertisers to get them to advertise um, more on our radio station. To be able to create um, the first element of a successful promotion, which is then to entertain the listener, it's really important to make sure that um, the contest or the promotion is fubby friendly so that we've used fubby. It must be fun or funny, useful, bold, beautiful or inspiring. If I don't have any of these aspects, it would be quite challenging to engage with someone who's only listening to be entertained and not actively participating, so the passive listener. Once the listener is involved, they are more than likely to keep listening um, and to tell others about how a, contest, how a contest or promotion made them feel. So one of the ways to ensure that um, a contest is fun is to make sure that the passive listener can play along. When I say a passive listener here, I mean, like I've said just now, the listener is not actually participating in the contest or the promotion, but is listening to others who are participating on air. The contest in this case could be a quiz, uh, for example, with questions that are easy for the passive um, listener to answer in a call, or a game where the passive listener can question the player's choices. A FABI contest does not necessarily have to have a play along factor, but it has to be genuinely FABI to truly engage with the listeners. So again, I am reiterating this passive listener, listener who is not actually participating in the contest or promotion, but is listening to others who are participating on air, active listener, engaged listener who will actively participate on air. Contests appeal to active listeners, as they are more likely to participate in research projects like station focus groups or rating services. So the second way then that um, promotions work is by capturing the attention of the most important type of listener, which is then this research sample participant, AKA the active listener. So what we found is that there are more interests, um, that there's a higher interest in contests. There's a higher interest in contests than we originally assumed. 
and that the majority of these active listeners who we then see as the research participants are interested in these in this in these contests okay so we saw that 55% of these research participants are interested in contests so what this means for us is that there's clear evidence that radio contests are targeted toward the right people okay so radio contests are targeted toward the active listener the third way that promotions work um, is by benefiting the advertisers. Promotions and contests are often sold to advertisers as they can afford, um, as they can offer brands a couple of benefits, okay? So if we look at those benefits, they can offer them great on-air audience participation, which then builds brand awareness. They can offer them embedded brand messaging in the radio editorial, various engaging ways to highlight new products or product launches, good communication of short-term objectives. They can offer them the creation of strong, positive brand association, and they can offer them listeners that can be directed to a point of purchase. Finally, promotions work because data capturing has become a vitally important part of promotions and contesting. Lund has compiled a checklist that you can use to make sure that the passive listener, the engaged listener, listener and the advertiser are all able to benefit from the promotion. What he suggests is that every radio station promotion should be evaluated according to the following criteria. And that criteria is, firstly, will it increase ratings by generating more tune-ins? Secondly, will it create awareness thereby creating word of mouth marketing. The third one, will it help establish a personal relationship between the station and its loyal listener? Number four, will it engage the, the station's image and brand proposition? Five, will it give the station an opportunity to capture data about its listeners? And lastly, will it generate sales revenue? Okay, so all of these are extremely important. And the station promotion should be able to answer yes to all of these, okay? And then there's a checklist. Michael Hedge came up with this comprehensive checklist, which can be quite helpful when doing your promotional planning. So firstly there, the promotion meets the marketing objectives, okay? So firstly, we need to check that whatever our marketing objectives are, that the promotion meets those objectives. Secondly, the promotional idea chosen is the one that is most likely to succeed. Obviously, you want that one. Thirdly, the promotion is memorable and prominent. It stands out. Then the promotion is simple. The rules don't take longer than 30 seconds to read out. You need to make sure that every single step is thoroughly thought out. Okay? The listener will feel that the time and energy they invested was worth it. The listener will feel that the listener will feel that the time and energy they invested was worth it. Okay, this time that they spent listening to this promotion is it worth their while? And lastly, the promotion has secured publicity, so it will receive coverage in it will receive coverage in local in local media. Um, for example, pictures of winners could be published on a local website. And that is pretty much a promotion in a nutshell. So let's quickly look at activity 6A on page 218. Okay, number one under activity 6A asks, explain what the acronym FUBI stands for. How does it differ from the widely used acronym FUBI and why was the second B included for, for the radio perspective? So what does FUBI stand for? Funny, useful, bold, beautiful and inspiring. How does it differ from FUBI? Well, there's an extra B, okay? That extra B stands for bold. That extra B stands for bold. And from a radio perspective, that extra B was added. Why? So that, pre so that presenters can challenge the traditional, no, the traditional norms of on-air radio so that they can be courageous and daring and innovative, okay? 
come up with new ideas or fresh takes on old ideas. So that's why there's an extra B. And then number two, name three advantages of promotions for a radio station. So what are some of these promotions? Great on a audience participation, which builds brand awareness. Good communication of short term objectives. Creation of a short Creation of a strong brand association. Creation of a positive strong brand association. There's three. And then number three, explain the difference between a passive and an active listener. And which type of listeners do you think radio stations have more of? Okay, so we spoke about active and passive listeners in detail. And if we go back, a passive listener is the one who's not actually participating in the contest or the promotion, but is listening to others who are participating on air, where the active listener is the one that is engaged, who will actively participate on air. Finding balance, finding the right balance is key between creating content and radio promotions in order to keep your listener fully engaged, okay? Also, if you can, try to involve your listeners as much as possible when you're doing a promotion. If you can get the listeners involved in some way, then um, me as a listener, I won't just be passively listening along, okay? But I'll be actively engaged. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at an example of a promotion. Okay, so I'm going to start off by showing you a promotion. Um, well, by showing you quite a few promotions, actually. Neil Power, he's the head of um, Station Sound of Beat 102 to 103 FM, um, shares the top 10 radio promotions from around the world. He's also been present at um, Radio Days Africa. Okay, so he's actually spoken about radio promotions before. So firstly, we're going to have a look at what he says, and then we're going to look at a promotion that Ryan Seacrest did for Kiss FM. I was tasked late last year by the organizing committee of Radio Days Europe to take a look around the world at radio promotions that uh, really delivered both to the station, for the listeners and for the clients that we work with as partners. And um, I suppose when I started, I asked myself two questions that are worth keeping in our heads. And the first question is why we might do a station promotion. And there's a number of reasons. Firstly, we might do it for reach to bring more people to our radio station. Uh, secondly, we might do it for share so that the people who are with us listen that little bit longer. Uh, we might do it for a particular reason within the station if we're launching a new breakfast show or drive time show. Uh, at Teams, at Beat, we like to do a Halloween promotion and a Christmas promotion and maybe something for the New Year Blues. And finally, uh, the client based promotion, which can sometimes be the most difficult for us to, to come up with when somebody comes to you with a brief and we've got to come up with an idea that that can really work. The second uh, thing I asked myself was about the characteristics of a great station promotion. And there are a number of them, and we try and tick as many of these boxes as we can. So uh, we get people talking and get their attention and talking to their friends about our station. Uh, secondly, that the mechanic is not overly complicated. And I'm in a unique position where I'm both on the operations team for major station promotions, but I'm also the lead voice on breakfast. So I know myself, if I can't sell it in a couple of sentences, we're on a hiding to nothing. Uh, the station team needs to buy 100% into it, and uh, also that it's relevant to whatever target that uh, the station is appealing to. And very important for us as well is the serial effect, that people want to know what happens next so that they'll stay on for the next show or the next day or whatever it might be. Also that 360 approach that we're delivering on air, online and on the street. And when we think about how we sell that promotion in terms of marketing and PR, that we think about the pre, during, and post, um, because there's no point in just finishing a radio promotion and wiping your hands and walking away. You need to get a win out of it. Uh, the last couple that we culminate in a big climax. Um, big budgets aren't everything. That you know, the kind of ideas that I'm showing off today should work for any station, no matter what your your size is. And finally, it's all about being creative within the station about how you might deliver. So we'll start. I'm going to start in Ireland, and we're heading to Cork to Red FM. And um, 
They brought us the chosen one in 2017, which brings radio and social media together. And in fact, some of you might be aware this was the winner of the gold award at the Imro Radio Awards in Lyrath back in October. And the setup and the sell on this is imagine a competition where you've already won it, but you don't even know yet. And that's what Red FM did uh, back in April when they introduced the chosen one. And this was the setup. You are the chosen one. Are you serious? Oh my God, thank you so much. I can't believe I've just given away 5,000 euros. I'm shaking. So am I. Only on Cork's Red FM. So this was a chance to win five grand every day. And what they did was they looked at all the likes on their station Facebook page and picked one. And uh, they went through that profile and gathered some clues about the person. So everything from... Their interests, the sports teams they liked, whether they were in a relationship, um, all that kind of stuff, whether they pets. And they formed a series of clues which they gave out across the day starting on breakfast. Three clues on each show. But uh, there was a bit of a catch because as each show moved on, the prize fund dropped by a €1,000 from 5 k to 4 k downward. So there was an urgency. If you thought that you were the chosen one and they were talking about you, that you'd ring in pretty early in the day. And this is what one of the winners sounded like. How are you going to start your work day this morning? Oh. Cup of coffee, check your emails. You know, you could be starting your day with thousands of euro in cash. Are you the chosen one? So very special. Only on Cork's Red FM. Red FM, hello, who's this? Hi, this is Marie Dilworth. Marie Dilworth, how are you? I'm just wondering, uh, maybe if I'm the chosen one? You're family orientated, Marie? I sure am. You're a big pop music fan? I am. Are you scientifically minded, technically speaking? Well, I work in Boston Scientific as a technician. Have you pulled over and put the flashers on? I haven't. <laughs> that's, that's good. Have you ever won 5,000 euro on a radio program before? No, I haven't. You have now. You are the chosen one. Are you serious? Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Oh, my God. Oh my I can't God. believe I've just given away 5,000 euros. I'm shaking. So am I. <laughs> the chosen one. Only on Cork's Red FM. You're so very special. So uh, you can imagine they got a huge reaction right across Cork City and County. And in fact, this was one of their Facebook posts that reached almost 300,000 people and had 25,000 comments as people pleaded to be the chosen one. And the promotion ran twice in 2017. Uh, 35 grand was given away to 17 different winners. And across that, uh, there was one person who actually got it at the 5K mark. Um, as we mentioned, a uh, huge Facebook reaction and also delivered a, a strong reason to stay listening right across the day to Red FM. We're going from Ireland to Australia next, and we're going to Sydney and the famous Kiss and the very famous Kyle and Jackie O. And this is a little bit Oprah inspired. Uh, you get a car. Everybody gets a car, and uh, they asked how big a radio promotion could be. It was a first for the radio industry in Australia, where every single caller on the breakfast show that morning was going to win a brand new car. And Hyundai were launching their new i30 model. Uh, they wanted to make some noise in the market, and they started with a four-week teaser campaign with on-air, online, and billboards. And this was how they set it up. Sydney. 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 Are you ready? Are you ready? Winning on radio. You got it. It's all happening tomorrow. We're giving everyone who gets on air a brand new car. Brand new car. We can't make it any easier than that. <laughs> it's the biggest radio car giveaway ever. Ever. And it's on the Kyle and Jackie O Show. <laughs> everyone who gets on air wins a brand new reinvented Hyundai i30. Oh my God. This Friday, there's only one show to listen to. Kyle and Jackie O. From 6 a.m. Exclusive to KISS. So as you can imagine, on the Friday morning when they launched the breakfast show, things got a little bit chaotic. A huge, huge day today because this is the day we are giving every single listener that gets to air a brand new Hyundai i30 car. How exciting. Let's go. First car is Jane Blackson. Oh, Jane. Ran to the city. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, happy birthday. 
That's quite a good one to finish watching. So um, I suggest you go and find it and watch the rest of that. So that's the top 10 radio promotions from around the world. Um, this is the 2018 one. Okay. Um, I'm not going to show you uh, more of that right now because I think you get the idea. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to the second one. Hi guys, it's Tanya Rad. I'm here, I'm in front of Maria's house. I'm whispering because she doesn't know that she's won yet, but I've got her big check and some flowers and I have her Ford over here and we're about to pay her bills for a year. And so Tanya, you're out in the wild. Where are you exactly? Describe the, the, the atmosphere around you. Um, I'm in the wild. We are, we have a lot, I mean, there's a lot of trees around here. And um, I have a little bit of a pre presumable issue before me. There is a okay. there is there is a locked gate. There's a locked gate. Yeah, okay. so I don't know how to get to her door. How are your scaling skills? Not too good. Well, no, we don't want her to climb the gate. Why not? She's a People's Choice Award winner. <laughs> 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 All right. So listen, we have the winner's name right here. We are dialing the phone number right now. Yes, remember we talked about making roll that time. Yeah, can you ask her to let us? Yeah, we'll have them open the gate. Yeah. Let me get the phone line. My heart's pounding. I know, I know. And we've done this before, but I get so excited about it every time. Hello, is Maria Dominguez of Altadena available? Yes, sure. Oh, Maria Dominguez, it is Ryan Seacrest and Sisney calling you on 102.7 KISS FM this morning. How are you? Hi, I'm doing good. Hi, how are you? Hi. Hey, we're good. What are you up to this morning? Um, uh, well, just getting ready to step out of the house. Oh, be careful if you do. I'll tell you why. There's someone outside at your gate. As a matter of fact, okay. if you open your door. Okay. And you go outside, do you, and do, can you open your gate for us? Tell me what you see behind your gate. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Hi. Maria Dominguez of Altadena. Guess what? You are the grand prize winner. Kiss FM is paying your bills. Maria, she is an Altadena. 
She's married with two boys, ages seven and four, works as a home loan officer, listens to kids every morning, taking the kids to school. Maria, we are paying for, do you have a rent or mortgage statement? Which do you have? Mortgage. We're paying your mortgage for a year. Maria Dominguez, we are paying for the groceries for the family for a year. Maria Dominguez, we're paying for the car insurance for a year. Oh, thank you so much. We've got the gas bill taken care of for an entire year oh. and your phone bill all paid for. Oh, thank you so much. This is such a blessing. So, Maria, we're also going to give you a brand new phone. Congratulations. Oh, thank you so much, Ryan. This is such a blessing. And we love to listen to you every morning. And I'm just so excited. Well, Maria, I'm so excited, too. I can't contain myself because I have one more thing to give to you. Okay. We're paying all those bills for 365 days. You're uh -huh. getting your new phone. And I am giving you the keys to a brand new 2020 Ford Explorer. Uh -huh. <laughs> there should be one just outside your front uh -huh. gate for you to look at. Okay, I love that. Let's uh look -huh. at it. Oh. Hey, Tanya, are you with us? Can you put Tanya on? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, so Tanya, tell me what you saw as that gate opened. <laughs> Wait, it was so cute. Her entire family came running out after us, like the whole family. And her husband was videotaping. He still is. Where are you? <laughs> there you are. <laughs> thank you, Ryan. He says got thank a whole you. video? Yeah, they got everything. Video? I mean, there's so much video happening right now. Okay, we have to get that posted out. Oh, wait, wait. His na her neighbor is saying hi. What's your name? Hector. Hector lives across the street from Maria, and he's saying hi. Hello, Hector. Put Hector on for a second. Hang on. Hector, can you come over here? In his pajamas. Imagine this happens in your Let's wake up the whole neighborhood. She just won. Hey, Kiss Major Bills for a year. Hector, good morning. ¿Cómo está? Muy bien, ¿y tú? Aquí, escuchándolo desde los 80. I've been listening since the 80s. The Greek things were Oh, my kids. gosh. Well, listen, so Kiss, we are paying Maria's bills, your neighbor's bills, for an entire year. All right. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we have another neighbor. What's your name? Oh, no, I'm her friend, Julie. Oh, you're her friend. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I found you guys here. Yeah, you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're fan. I'm your fan. Yes. Maria Dominguez of Altadena just got her bills paid for a year. One of two point seven. Kiss the is coming right back. All right, Maria, we paid your bills for a year, and you got this brand new Ford. Um, thank you, Ford, so much for making this happen, and thank you for being the best listener ever. Thank you. Thank you so much for everything for you, Ryan. Tiffany, everybody, everybody. I love listening to you guys in the morning. We love you, and I, I was so blessed to be. Blessed by you guys. Thank you. Your bills are being paid for here, baby. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, so what did you think about that? Did that evoke any emotions from you? It did, definitely did by me. I got goosebumps and I was smiling. You see, there were quite a few fobby moments in there for me. Okay, um, so that was a really good promotional moment. Obviously, this is one that spanned over quite some time. It's a really big promotion, as you could hear. Um, so what I want you to do for me now, for homework rather, is to design a successful radio promotion for a Metro FM audience. So that's what I want you to think about, okay? Um, I want you to design a successful radio promotion for a Metro FM audience and then email it through to me. So keep in mind everything that we just spoke about, what you just saw, if you Google, there's going to be so many promotions um, on the internet, okay? But for now, that brings us to the end of this lesson. So I hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you. And I'll see you again for the next one. Bye.